Recently, I've been getting a bunch of questions about big 100 watt amps versus their smaller counterparts like this one here. I noticed you mostly own big high wattage amps and I know you're in bands, but if you were only playing at home, would you still own those or even 100 watt amps? Or would you switch totally to low wattage lunchbox or modeler style amps? I'm just wondering if there's something large amps bring that you're not willing to give up even if you're only playing at home. That is a great question and it's a bit of a can of worms, so I'll try to keep it brief. But to me, it's really all about headroom. The short answer is that nine out of 10 times, I much prefer 100 watt heads. Regardless of what volume you're playing them at, there's something just kind of big and bold and punchy sounding about them that can be tough to find in lower wattage amps sometimes. <laughs> The long answer is that I am not a purist by any means, so really whatever gets the job done is cool with me, it's just about what context you use it in. There are loads of lower wattage amps that sound great at home, in a recording context, or on a low volume stage, but depending on the kind of music you play, oftentimes those amps can't really keep up with a loud band or a drummer live if you're playing in a situation where volume matters. Just recently, I brought the little 20 watt Marshall JCM 800 studio to a band practice just to check it out and see how it would hang in that context. And truthfully, it ran out of steam pretty quick, but that was to be expected, I think. In order to keep up volume wise with a hard hitting drummer and a full on SVT rig, I had to have the master volume cranked just about all the way up. And when you run a tube amp like that, you lose a lot of that dynamic range and the amp will compress to a point that you lose that punch of what makes a JCM 800 so cool in my opinion. But that's not a knock on the JCM 800 studio, that's just not what this amp was designed to do. Again, this was a band practice where we weren't miking up amps, it was just sheer volume competing with a drummer. <laughs> So that's where higher wattage amps really come into play. The bigger power section gives you the ability to turn up the amp to easily compete with a loud drummer, or bass player, or something like that, but have plenty of room to spare so the amp can just comfortably hang at that volume level. You're not wishing it had more on tap. If you have strong PA support when playing live or wherever you're practicing, it really doesn't matter at that point. Just play whatever you think sounds good and the PA will account for the volume. But for me, where I'll play all kinds of different situations, I like having the flexibility of an amp that can get super loud if I need it to. The trick is finding an amp that has a great master volume so you can kind of have the best of both worlds. But the only problem with that is that not all master volumes are created equal and there are plenty of 100 watt amps that if you try to play them at low volumes just sound and feel horrible. Those amps were really designed to be cranked up to a sweet spot where things kind of open up and come alive and that volume for many folks just isn't practical. But if you've got a 100 watt amp that doesn't have a great master volume, there are tons of tools these days to mitigate volume and record at home you know, and avoid pissing off your neighbors and things like that. Things like the Sur Reactive Load, the Universal Audio Ox Box, the Fryat Power Station, all of those things have come light years beyond what they were even 10 years ago or something like that. So I would definitely check those out. Tonally speaking, if you're close micing these amps like the big JCM 800 versus the little one, the SLO 100 versus the SLO 30, the differences are really minor in my opinion. It's, it's nothing that you couldn't just tweak and post with an EQ, subtle things like that. So the differences are much more about volume and headroom than it is about tone, to my ears at least. Anyways, I could go on about this stuff for hours. I just thought it was a cool question and worth addressing in this kind of longer format versus trying to type out some crazy long answer or something. In short, I'm generally a 100 watt amp guy through and through, but it all depends on the context of how loud you need to be. If I were only playing and recording at home, I would probably just use amp sim plugins or a small amp like this JCM 800 Studio or the SLO 30, which are two of my favorite smaller amps that I've played in a long time. So let me know what you think in the comments. What are you going for personally? The big 100 watt, arguably antiquated solution or something more modern, lower wattage or modeling amp solution or something like that? I'd be curious to hear. <laughs> Thank you.
As always, thanks so much to Zounds for the support. If you are interested in any of the gear used in this video, please hit the links in the description below and it helps this channel out in a big way. So I really appreciate you checking out the video and we'll see you next time.